Hi everyone, today we are going to be talking about my autumn beauty must-haves. These are all of the products that I will be carrying with me all the way through the season of autumn and then in a couple of months time we're going to have a winter beauty must-haves video because although some of these products will transfer really nicely into the season of winter, I just think winter is a season in itself, obviously. <laughs> so I like to have different products for winter than I generally have for autumn. But we're going to talk about autumn today because we are bang smack right in it. So let's get started. If you're new here, hi, my name's Gemma. I upload new content on YouTube every single week. Have a little bit of a cold at the moment. You're probably going to realize that my voice is a little bit iffy in parts during this video, but we're going to muscle on through. I would love it at some point in this video, if you are finding it helpful, please consider clicking on the like button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell so you don't miss any more videos like these. Let's jump straight into necessity number one. So this is where I usually get on my high horse. I'm not gonna do that today because you all know the drill. If you've been following me for a really long time, you will know how much of a stickler I am, regardless of whether it's spring, summer, autumn, winter for SPF on a daily basis. And I know still, even though I shout it from the rooftops, a lot of people still think if the sun isn't out, why bother wearing SPF? Well. In spring and summer when we're out in the sun a lot, obviously SPF is super, super important because it stops us from getting a lot of sun damage. We are still getting a little bit of sun damage if we're out in the sun, even if we're plastered in SPF, but it reduces that sun damage. During autumn and winter, this is where we're going to see the most benefits from our skincare, those LED masks, those lasers, retinoids, vitamin C, azelaic acid, but only if you're wearing a sunscreen. Everyone should be wearing a sunscreen. And my favorite sunscreen, regardless of what season we're in, is the Isntree Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel. This is an SPF of 50 plus with a PA rating of plus, 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 plus. For anyone who's sensitive to a specific UV filter, here are all the filters that are included within this product. It sinks into the skin really beautifully. It sits under makeup really beautifully. During spring and summer, this is enough for me and I tend not to use a moisturizer in combination with this. This is enough. However, during autumn, I do like to apply a thicker moisturizer before I apply this because it is so lightweight and it just feels like nothing on the skin. So with my skincare during autumn, I, like I said earlier on, like to boost the capabilities of all of my skincare products by using an SPF. But I also like to combine products that are going to look after my skin barrier because the skin barrier is key for skin hydration. If you look after your skin barrier, if you make it so that it is as healthy as it possibly can be, it will enable it to retain moisture and prevent transepidermal water loss throughout the day when you go out into those elements, that wind, that rain, blustering cold, and then coming in and sitting by a fire. I, I love autumn. Anybody else absolutely love autumn. Autumn is my season when the leaves are falling off the trees and everything's just going a beautiful color. I get rather excited on the run up to Christmas. I'm just, oh, it's so, so my season. So there are a couple of products that I've introduced into my skincare routine for autumn that I wouldn't necessarily use in spring and summer. The first one is just so super special. It's really simple in formulation, so you probably don't need to spend this much to get this benefit, but I really, really like this product. I've only been trying it now for, I would say around about three weeks and really enjoying it. My skin really loves it. And that is the main purpose, isn't it? If your skin loves it, keep using it. So this is from Drunk Elephant and it's the Ceramite AF Eye Balm. It's got some lovely ingredients in there. Like I said, this isn't a revolutionary product. The ingredients in here don't cost an absolute fortune, but it's Drunk Elephant. So the actual product is going to cost you a bit, but it is lovely. And my under eyes, smooth, hydrated, plumped and just concealer and color corrector 
sits on there so beautifully after I've applied this in the morning. This has a smooth, buttery texture which sinks into the skin beautifully and feels like nothing, which actually surprised me when I first got my hands on this because some of the ingredients in here are quite heavy duty on hydration. So I was expecting it to feel a little heavier and was pleasantly surprised. It actually pains me wasting some of this product on the back of my hand because I only have five mils in my little tub and I'm doing so, so well with my mini and making it last. You need very, very little of this. One pump is way too much for both eyes. So half a pump is the perfect amount in the mini anyway. I'm not quite sure how much you get within a full pump on the full size version, but I am soon to tell because uh, I will be purchasing this in the larger size. The next skincare product I've introduced into my autumn skincare routine is way more affordable than the Drunk Elephant Ceramite Eye Balm and my bank balance is really happy to hear that. This is from The Ordinary and it's the Soothing and Barrier Support Serum. This does exactly what it says it's going to do. It's not an all singing, all dancing product. This is not going to reduce your pigmentation. It's not going to reduce any texture. It's not going to reduce fine lines and wrinkles. It's going to soothe the skin and it's going to seriously look after that skin barrier so it can retain moisture throughout the day and make your skin look plumper and healthier because of those aspects. Now, if you are outside quite a bit or if you are in a heated house quite a lot and you feel like your skin is drying out because of that, this may be right up your street. It is divine. It feels beautiful. It sinks into the skin really nicely. And as soon as I've applied this, any irritation that I have on my skin, any dryness that is a little bit scratchy that I have on my skin just soothes straight away. This is a little bit of a magic product and I was really underwhelmed when I saw that this was going to be released. I was excited because I always am with releases from The Ordinary, but I just thought, do I actually need that? And now I have it in my life. Yes, I do. <laughs> So the formula has gallic acid derivatives in there to soothe the skin. It's also got vitamin B12 in there to reduce any redness and also to soothe. Vitamin B12 is what gives this formula the pinky color that in my opinion makes it look like an antacid for the stomach. Please don't drink this. It is not meant for internal use. Just apply it to the skin. Your skin will thank you for it. It's also got ceramide complex in there and niacinamide 2%. Both of these ingredients promote and support a healthy moisture barrier and in turn support hydration. It does contain niacinamide in there and I do know that a lot of my subscribers are sensitive to high volumes of niacinamide and get a little bit of irritation. Now, niacinamide is a really well-tolerated ingredient by most, but some can't handle it in the quantities that we see in lots of products, including the Ordinary's niacinamide 10% plus zinc. 1% is it, or is it 2% zinc? I can't remember. I'll put it on the screen for you now. I love niacinamide, but I think they have been very clever with this formula because this is supposed to soothe irritation for anybody that is sensitive to niacinamide. They have popped niacinamide in here, but only at 2%, which is extremely well tolerated by most. So you may find that if you are sensitive to niacinamide, you still can't use this, but it's worth a go in my opinion, because at these levels, you're still going to get the benefits of niacinamide, but you're not gonna overload. Lip moisturization and hydration can be a bit problematic for me. I've never really mastered it down to the nth degree. Until now, I am hoping I am keeping all my fingers crossed for this next product because I am by no means an outdoorsy girl at all. However, I do spend a lot of time outdoors because both Seth and Beatrice play for football teams. So on a Saturday, the girls teams play and on a Sunday, the boys teams play. So every Saturday and Sunday morning, without fail, I am stood next to a football pitch regardless of whether it is sunny 
very rarely happens. Windy, rainy, snowy, blustery, frosty, you name it, I am there because I just love to watch them play but it does batter my lips and they do get quite dry. Now I've tried many lip balms and I like a lot of them, but not every single one that I've tried has the quality of ingredients and the benefits that this particular lip balm is going to give my lips. And I also know that not everybody likes a really thick, heavy lip balm and uh, I'm, I'm not opposed to a really thick, heavy lip balm, but I do know that if I'm going outside, I don't want a sticky lip Lip balm and this definitely isn't that. It also isn't heavy either. It's really lightweight, it's incredibly smoothing and I really am enjoying using it. This is the Inculus Tripeptide Plumping Lip Balm and I am loving using it at the moment. It does have quite a thick sticky consistency to begin with but as soon as the product hits the warmth of your lips it spreads really nicely and the majority of it sinks in. So this is not just a surface product like the majority of other lip balms. Most lip balms sit on the surface to try and block that transepidermal water loss and they also have some nice ingredients in there to try and hydrate the lips whilst they do that job. However, this one, because it actually sinks into the lip, a lot of the ingredients that are within this formula that aren't for blocking that transepidermal water loss can get to work and really plump from within and hydrate from within. Unlike a lot of other lip balms that I've tried, this particular lip balm works to repair and maintain the skin barrier to improve hydration. Very much like the ordinary product, and the eye balm that I spoke about earlier on in this video. So this has 6% tripeptide complex to really plump and repair and smooth. It also helps to reduce fine lines on the surface of the lip as well. This also has 2% hyaluronic acid spheres to hydrate the lips from within. It's a really lovely formula and it's not expensive either, unlike a lot of other ones that I've had on my lips that don't have the ingredients in there that this has. Like I fleetingly mentioned earlier on, I have a cold at the moment. I have been coughing, I have been sneezing, I've had a blocked nose, I've had a streaming nose, so I've been constantly blowing my nose, dabbing my nose, just wiping my nose. And when you're doing that consistently, the skin barrier around the, your nose, around the corners of your nose, on the end of your nose, on the top of your lip where it often gets caught with the tissue can become incredibly impaired, really red, sore, angry. And this next product has completely saved me. And it's just unbelievable, truly is. And whilst we're in mid cold season at the moment, I wanted to pass this on to everybody. I have mentioned this product on my channel before and said how fantastic it is, but I didn't realize how amazing it was until I've really needed it to be amazing and it's delivered. This is the Restoring Ceramide Skin Balm from Dermatica and I cannot tell you how grateful I was that this was in my collection when all this started because it is magic in a tub. You don't get a lot. So you get 13 grams. However, it's really affordable and it's not like a moisturizer that you're going to use every single day. You're going to use this quite sporadically when you have any irritated or broken skin on the face or on the body. You just apply this a little bit to the area and you'd be on your way. So this is a great handbag product. If you ever need it on the go, it's a great little tin and off you go. So this is Vaseline on steroids. It's very similar to Vaseline. However, the consistency is slightly different. So it's not as stiff as Vaseline. And it also has other ingredients in there as well, which make this way more potent than Vaseline ever could be. So just like Vaseline, this is really good at creating a barrier over the portion of skin that is really irritated and broken to prevent any more transepidermal water loss happening. So to prevent that from drying out even further and becoming even more irritated and angry. Whilst it's doing that, however, this also has those other ingredients to repair and protect the compromised skin barrier 
Those ingredients generally are really hydrating and nourishing ingredients, but also ceramides in there as well, which we already know absolutely fantastic for looking after skin barrier health. Not to give you too much information, but I've had a cold now for a few days, so it's been continuous with the tissue, and if you look at my nose, if I zoom you in, there is no dry skin whatsoever, and usually I get really red around the corners of my nose, straight underneath my nose there, and on the top lip, it gets really red and sore, and nothing, absolutely nothing. So when I am going out a lot and I am applying makeup, I don't want to be having that makeup transfer on all of my clothes because I tend to wear a lot of woolly chunky knits and my coat comes up quite far so you don't want to be turning your head and having your makeup rub off on the corners of your coat. So I need a transfer resistant foundation. Now obviously you can make any foundation slightly more transfer resistant with a good setting spray. My favourite one is from Laura Mercier. I mentioned this last year. I haven't found one that rivals this yet. This is just superb. This is the Translucent Pure Setting Spray 16 Hour. The reason I like this one so much, one, it's alcohol-free, it's fragrance-free, but also this does the job. This seriously sets my face. So it is a setting spray. It does what it says but this doesn't change the look of my makeup. Like a lot of other setting sprays that can make my makeup glowier or just dewier, this doesn't do that. When it dries down, it's invisible. Win, win, win. So the transfer resistant foundation that I really, really like, Six months ago, it would have been a completely different foundation. It would have been the Dior Backstage Face and Body, which was my ride or die for transfer resistance. Unfortunately, they've reformulated and I just don't think it's transfer resistant anymore. It's still beautiful, not the same foundation. So the one that I've been reaching for and loving is the new formulation of the YSL All Hours Foundation. This is a natural matte. I have this on today. Don't look at the cheeks because I have a glowy blush on there to really lift this foundation and give it a bit more life, but it's lovely and it's transfer resistant. And with the setting spray on top, bulletproof. But it's not just transfer resistant, this also has a lot of lovely skincare benefits within the formula and I don't usually rave on about skincare benefits because I don't wear a foundation for the skincare benefits, I wear a foundation for how it makes my skin look. And um, the reason I'm mentioning it is because the original All Hours formula, which I liked, clung on to my dry areas and this doesn't, and I attribute that to the skincare benefits that are within this formula. This also gives you a really lovely coverage, so I can get anything from medium to full coverage out of this, and it's incredibly skin-like. This does not look heavy, it does not look cakey on my skin. I have this on today, so if you look at around here where I don't have any illuminating blush on or on my forehead, it looks like skin, it looks really beautiful and again, bulletproof. So I just can't see what's not to like about this at this point. I will be doing a full face of transfer resistant drugstore makeup. So if this is out of your budget, stay tuned for that because I'm gonna be doing a full face of affordable in the very near future. I do like to wear a glowy blush in autumn. I think it gives the illusion of light hitting the face when not a lot of light is hitting your face. It also helps to create a fuller cheek. So if that's the look you're after, then glowy blushes can definitely do that. I have just ordered the brand new limited edition NARS palette that they release every single year. And I have several in my drawer already that I love but the color story of this new palette just screams at me. So I had to order it. It's not arrived yet, so I haven't used that one, but that would probably be my go-to in autumn 
once it's arrived. The one that I have on today is the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light Wand in the shade Peach Gasm. This can be used as a blush, can also be used as a highlighter. I've used it as both today and I just think it is stunning. And finally, let's talk about warm, cozy fragrances, which for me is a must in autumn. I am trying to find a really warm, very womanly, sexy fragrance for winter. Haven't found one yet, so please give me your recommendations in the comment section. I want just something really sensuous, a very date night fragrance. Um, if Wes ever takes me out, that's the one that I will wear. So please, please give me your recommendations because I have been trying so many and really not liking anything that I've tried. In autumn, however, I do like more of a sweet, warm fragrance, but I don't want it to be girly sweet. I want it to be a grown-up sweetness, and this is perfection on me. In spring and summer, I go for the lighter, more zestier fragrances, but I do like a really warm fragrance in autumn and winter. The one that I am just adoring is from Commodity and it's the Milk Bold fragrance. There is quite a big difference between the Milk Expressive fragrance and the Milk Bold. The Milk Bold is the heartier, warmer fragrance. It's the one that stays around for much longer. It has great longevity and it's punchy. So people will smell you coming and I love that. This gives off toasting marshmallows by a campfire vibe. It is heartwarming, it is beautiful and it is anything but subtle. This has notes of cashmere woods and skin musk, tonka bean, warm marshmallow, amber and really beautiful firewood coming from underneath. It is just gorgeous. And every time I smell this, it just makes me go, <sighs> that's what you want, isn't it, out of a fragrance? Everything I could want for autumn. But again, please give me your recommendations for that really sexy, warm perfume for winter. Dying to know your recommendations. So they're my products that I will be using all the way through autumn. Please stay tuned for those winter beauty essentials. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell and hope to see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.